So welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan here. Now, for today, starting up the week, what better way to start up an epic week than to be chatting with the incredible, amazing, the badass, the superstar, the legendary, the one and only, the unique, the the awesome, the the amazing Kaylee. Kaylee, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? You're fantastic. I mean, what better way to starting up a fantastic, super badass week than to be chatting with someone, you know, as badass as you, right? Thank you. There you go. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow, helps a lot. But also, on the description below, you're going to find all of Kaylee's social media. Let's follow her. But also, let's discover why she's super badass, right? So, uh, without further more, let's jump in. So, I want to start this whole amazing conversation by throwing out the first question, which is, what initially drew you to pursue acting as a career? Initially, I guess I started a long time ago. So I did uh, some theater when I was younger, um, mostly theater acting when I was in like middle school, uh, elementary, that kind of thing. And I really loved doing it. Um, kind of fell away from it when I went to high school and then university and everything. Um, so I took like, I want to say like a good solid 18 year hiatus from anything uh, acting related. And then kind of uh, about this time last year, actually, I was just looking for something different. Um, I kind of felt stuck in my career. I felt uh, I didn't really have too many hobbies going on. So it was like a little bit, I was a little bit bored just with where my life was. And so I just found an acting class somewhere and I was like, I'm just going to try it and just because why not? And then I jumped into it and I haven't looked back since. It's been It's been great. There you go. I love it. And can you recall a specific moment or performance that solidified your passion for acting? Um, a specific moment? Let me see. Um, so I recently did, in November, I did a film. It was my first lead with the students at State. And uh, that one was, that was kind of like my first time on like a real set. So that was, that was a big one for me. I was super excited about that. Um, I work as a nurse, so like I work twelve hours, twelve hour shifts. And when I did this, when we were outside in the cold in November for twelve hours straight, and it just flew by. Like it just, it didn't feel like work at all. Everyone was amazing to work with. Um, actually, being on a set and like doing the acting and stuff was much, much more like I don't, I don't know if I'd say more enjoyable, but yeah, yeah, more definitely more enjoyable than working in a hospital but um, yeah. also like a complete 180 from any sort of class yeah absolutely but also i think it like having the chance for example in your case right that you work as a nurse you will also have the opportunity to meet to meet new characters somehow you know what i mean like perhaps pieces of i mean i i would assume that having the chance like to be able to meet so many people sometimes you will be like you know what this perhaps i could use this for a character at some point or things like that or uh, yeah, somewhat. I, I do kind of relate to that, too, because, I mean, especially where I get to characters maybe who are going through, like, some sort of, tra like, challenging time in their life or, like, some sort of medical problem or some sort of anything like that. And I kind of, my mind, the first thing my mind does is I'm automatically go back, go back to my job. <laughs> and then I'm trying to relate to things that I've seen in my career, um, but then also bring it back to myself and be like, how can I relate personally? Yeah, totally. I think that is like the whole beauty of it. The fact that you can get the chance to, <clears throat> to, I mean, I wouldn't say relate, but having the chance to use things that you, that, that you see on your, you know, on your, on your, on your daily life to help you to create a character at some point in your career, which is, yeah, cool. totally. that's, that's awesome. That's like bad as level one, you know, we're starting out. <laughs> I love it. Now tell me, like, how do you approach preparing for a new role and what techniques or methods do you find most effective? Um, my approach is, uh, is a little haphazard. I tend to do things just, I just kind of tend to go with the flow. Um, like first, you know, absolutely know my lines, like off by heart, know the script in and out. Um, but other than that, it's just like kind of blocking by myself trying to think about how a scene would go, what my character might do, um, and how I can personally, like, what I can bring to the character itself. Because, um, I mean, like, 
directors always have an idea of what they want the character to be like but then there's also the actor side who they can bring something else that the director might not have thought of before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think at the, at the end you wanted to make it as kind of a real as possible you know something that people can relate to totally which is great because it, and i think that is why we need yeah like why we need art so so much you know the fact that um a film, a TV show, even a play, you know, a character can somehow hit you. Can, yeah, like can, can somehow hit you in your personal life, you know, like you can totally relate somehow. And then, I mean, it, it's, I, I find it pretty, yeah, like pretty amazing that connection that um, that the actor is able to create with the audience, you know, into a point that they actually care about the character. They actually have feel emotions to the character, even though that you know in your head that what you're watching is not real, that is fictional. But still, you know, like those emotions are real, which is great. So, yeah, for sure, I agree. There you go. Now, what has been the most challenging role you've undertaken, and how did you overcome those challenges? Um, the most challenging role, I would say, I did the first kind of role that I did when I first started, which was uh, last year in a class. Um, I. We did like a, a scene study class. So we were partnered up and then we would go study the scene over six weeks and then play it out in front of kind of like the class. Um, that one was a challenging one for me because I was kind of, I was diving in. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I just kind of went for it, went to the class and I was like, I'll see how this goes. And then uh, just kind of basically started from scratch and six weeks later putting on like a, a mini play for everyone in the class so that was that was a tough one for me and then I guess um a few weeks ago I shot uh, my own my demo reel with a few other people um and in that one I was playing uh the wife it's a scene from Donnie Brasco um so I was playing the wife and it was a bit more of an emotional scene and I do have a hard time I find it very challenging to kind of get to the emotional level. So that one was, a, that was definitely a challenge for me. Mm. Yeah, I can bet, right? Yeah. Okay. But you were able to make it happen, so. I hope so. <laughs> I guess we'll, I think we'll so. see. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> That's a good plan. And are there like any rituals or routines that you follow to get into character before, you know, filming or performing? Um, not any specific ritual, but I don't I don't know if I have any sort of routine either I'm kind of a more of a like take it as it happens kind of person like I do have like I'll have an idea in my head about how I want to play the character but then I also like to leave I like to leave a lot of room for like scene partners um and just kind of see how things play out when you actually start acting with another person because sometimes you go in like entirely prepared and then you start doing a scene that's completely different than what you were thinking about and you're like oh this is not one of that. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're like more open to it, you know, like more, we'll see what happens. Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, like I say, I, of course, have all the prep work done, have my lines learned, yeah, totally. know the character. But uh, at the after that, I think it's more like I'll play in my head. I'll kind of run the scene how I think that I would do it. And that, of course, is like without who my scene partner would be at that time. And then just kind of be very open to playing it in different kind of ways. There you go. That is level three. <laughs> Epic. Now, can you share a memorable on set or backstage moment that left a lasting impression on you? Um, a memorable moment, I think, on set. I think uh, my whole uh, experience with my first lead there that I was talking about a bit ago, that was uh, that was kind of the most memorable for me right now. Um, like I said, that was kind of like my first opportunity to be on a set doing the work, being around, like knowing, getting to know like the different roles of people, uh, getting to know what I'm supposed to do and when. <laughs> um, I think that was a pretty memorable one for me just to see like exactly how much work I need to put into this and how much, how much I can grow as a person, not only as a person, but also as an actor as well. 
um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of work ahead <laughs> is basically what I figured out from that. But I think it was very memorable in that uh, I finally kind of got to do what I had been hoping to do for a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like the important thing here, you know, that you're that you're taking those steps in order to keep growing and keep uh, developing yourself into your into the whole acting industry, you know, to kind of create like your own like your own style to it, you know, which is great. So. Yeah. Love it. Now, how do you balance portraying a character authentically while still bringing your own unique style and personality to the role? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um I think uh, just kind of trying to relate to the character's experiences as much as I can. Like, um, especially if you get, like, if you're lucky and you get, like, a whole character breakdown of, like, what the director has written this character about and, like, what their lived experience has been and all that kind of stuff. If you, if you can get that and kind of relate yourself and your lived experiences to that, then that kind of helps a lot. But a lot of the times all you have to go on is the script. So... Um, you kind of almost have to like create an imaginary world in your head of what you think this character might have might have been through based on what is in the script and then kind of relate your own personal experiences to that. Mm. Okay. That make it makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And have you ever experienced a breakthrough moment where a role or performance significantly impacted your growth as an actor? Um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of the classes I've been taking have been helping me with that a lot. Like, especially I find just acting in general has really opened me up, like with personal growth. Um, I tend to be a little bit more of a reserved person, a little bit more on the uh, quiet side, and I find that just ever since I've kind of driven into acting, that I've really opened myself up more and I've created kind of this kind of circle of people that I know are like really close friends for me. Um, so that's been a really great moment of personal growth. And then professional growth, I guess, has been like uh, confidence that I found in acting where it's like um, I can figure out somewhat in my own mind how I want to play a role and how I see myself playing a role. And that has kind of come from, like, starting from scratch last year. Badass. <laughs> you know, I think that is, I think that perhaps that could be, like, one of the, you know, multiple misconceptions that people have about actors. The fact that if you're an actor, you're supposed to be very open to everything, you know, and, you know, that uh, that you always love to be on, you know, on the scene and to be the spot, you know, things like that. You know, I, I have met a bunch of actors that you see their performances, right? And you see their, you know, and then you talk to them outside of acting and it's like a totally opposite person, which is understandable because, you know, it's it's a character, it's a role, you know, <laughs> which I do think that sometimes perhaps people might, as I was saying, that that could be perhaps like one of those misconceptions that people think that that actor should be always, you know, open to everything, you know, and all of that. And he, like, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Cool. Like very... <laughs> Very, very outgoing, kind of loud, mm -hmm. kind of extravagant, kind of, mm -hmm, kind mm -hmm. of people. But yeah, yeah totally. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe like when you get to know me, I'm a little bit more outgoing. But as a in like a big crowd or something, I'm usually a quiet one. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The same here. I mean, I could, I could be like very open and everything. But if you put me in front of people, I mean, not right now. I'm more comfortable as as, as I was before. You know, like before creating this platform, if he, uh, I was just getting nervous you know if someone if there was like this group session and then it was my turn to talk i'll be like oh crap <laughs> you know what i mean like uh but it's good like it's good when you have the opportunity to kind of work on that also you know it kind of gives you like more security like more you know you to trope you know like more or like what is the word here like um yeah you you start to like overcome those challenges let's say you know so yeah, a lot more. There's a lot more personal growth that's come from acting than I would have anticipated. Absolutely, and you're making it happen, which is like double, you know, like <laughs> double cool, you know. So, epic. Now, like, what do you find most rewarding about being an actor, both personally and professionally? Um, 
I would almost kind of echo the answer that I just gave. Like, uh, like I said, personal growth has been just immense in the past year since I've started doing this. Um, I've gained confidence. I've gained a lot of friends. A lot met a lot of really good, talented people. Like it's been it's been a whirlwind of a year since I've started doing this, and uh, I wouldn't change it. It's been absolutely great. Um, um, and the most rewarding, I think, yeah, like I say, like just the growth as a person, and even in my like my day job, and as an actor as well, I find that there's been kind of like a, a synchronous growth of them all. Um, like in my personal life, I've gained confidence. I've gained, I've gained a great group of friends. Um, I've gained the ability to kind of see things from multiple different perspectives. And then that helps my professional life as well as a nurse, kind of empathizing with people like in their worst times. Like a lot of the times, I guess, I see people on their worst days. Um, so acting and the lessons that I learned from acting have helped me become more empathetic than I might have been or might have not even realized that I hadn't been before. <laughs> um, so that's been great for me as well. And just like the confidence to uh, to do my job better. Um, and then as an actor, there's just been um, a little more comfort in the uh, in the craft itself and like the drive and the motivation to keep working on the craft. Because it's like um, even before I started acting, I've always been someone who is open to learning and open to trying new things and open to and just never... There's never a point when I think that you have learned everything. So I think as an actor, it's helped me just understand that there's never a point in any sort or facet of your life where you're going to know everything. And so I think it's great to be open to to learning, to trying different things, to maybe say you prepared a role one way. Why don't we try it a different way? You know what I mean? And it's not anything, it's not bad for the actor and it's not bad for the crew. It's not bad for anyone. Like it's not that anybody did anything wrong. It's just that why don't we try this different way? Something that maybe somebody didn't think of. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, that's life, right? You need to, mm -hmm, absolutely. you need to like learn new things in order to like, like become, like be, become better, you know, in mm -hmm. regardless of what you're doing and also in your personal life. And it's great. The fact that, um, uh, that you were, that you kind of understand that quickly or it took you or took some time of course but you're able like to like to making those uh those steps you know to to um yeah to improve your craft to improve yourself as an actor to improve yourself as a person somehow you know like all of that so yeah there you go <laughs> i love it now how do you navigate the highs and the lows of the entertainment industry and what advice would you give to aspiring actors who are facing the similar challenges? Um, to deal with the highs and the lows. I mean, the highs are great. <laughs> those are those are good times. <laughs> Don't really have much to worry about those. But there is a more significant proportion, I would say, of lows when it comes to in this career, just in terms of. I guess mostly in terms of like auditioning for a role and not hearing back, auditioning for something else, you don't hear back. And you just, it's kind of like a cycle until you finally get, oh, hey, we, we want you. And you're like, oh. <laughs> uh, I guess to deal with that, I kind of uh, personally, uh, whenever I do an audition, self tape or in person, I kind of tend to, I put in the work and make sure it's the best that I can do it. Um, and then most of, most of the things that do are self tape. So like I send it in and then I let it go. I, I'm like, that's done. If I hear back from them, great. If I don't, great. That's, I did what I had to do. If they pick me, it's meant to be. If not, then it's not. Like I can't, at that point, it's out of my, out of my control. And so I don't really like to think too much about things that are out of my control. So that's kind of where that ends. I don't know how that, I don't know if that works for everybody, but that's kind of just how I like to think about it. Mm, yeah, I'll take it. I'll tell you what, if I ever become an actor, yeah, at some point when I write my memoirs, I'll be mentioning you in my thank you speech. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, you know, as as uh, I also think that that's kind of life too. You know, you can't have everything and sometimes things might not work the way 
you want to, but maybe it wasn't meant to be at that point, you know what I mean? Or at least that's what, that's what I try to repeat myself. Like every now and then something doesn't work for me. I'm like, nah, wasn't meant to be, right? And I think as well, uh, especially with the amount of like auditions and not hearing back uh, that goes on in the industry now, I think if you spend a lot of time dwelling on the things that you didn't get or that you didn't do or that you couldn't do, that can be really hard on someone's brain like that just to think all day like oh man what if I did this different what if I did that like that's a lot and that is a lot to worry about when you actually when you can't change it and you can't change what you did what you submitted how you did the audition after it's done you can't really worry about it and so yeah to spend a lot of time dwelling on that part that could be very mentally taxing yeah yeah, basically, it becomes a pain in the butt. <laughs> right now, are there any <clears throat> are there any dream roles or projects you aspire to pursue in the future? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I would like to do something. I think I'd like to do. I mean, I haven't done a whole lot yet, so I'd like to do more in general. But um, I also would like to do kind of like. I like to expand. I don't want to be kind of boxed into one particular role. Like I don't want to be um, doing the same thing over and over and over again. Although sometimes it is like you do what you got to, what you got to do, right? Um, I think if I was to pick something, though, it would be kind of more like a dark, edgy kind of role. Um, maybe something with a little bit of action. I think that would be super fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, generally, I would just like to do more. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I mean, who knows? Maybe at some point, you will even have your own action figure. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> oh, cool. I mean, that would be surreal, would right? Be cool. To go to a store and then to see to see you as an action figure, you know? I know. That would be so play, weird. Right? I mean, I would <laughs> that so would be. But at the same time, that would be kind of awesome to see, you know, as yeah. a, you know, all of that. <laughs> Now, how do you stay inspired and creatively fulfilled in your craft? Um, in a lot of different ways. Um, like I said before, I've kind of created this uh, circle of like really close friends that I have now who are all quite like-minded and very, very talented. Um, and I guess having those, having that kind of circle around me has been immensely helpful because everybody's just so inspiring they're talented they're driven they're motivated and kind of keeps me in that kind of keeps me accountable i guess <laughs> that i'm like i gotta do more um but uh yeah and i think uh even not technically like acting all the time like i am currently being the production assistant and health consultant on a short film right now that we're making um and there's like a whole crew of us who are like i mean there are people that some of them that i've just met and some of them that i've known for a bit um but they're all just super inspiring people and it's such a great project and it really i find it's really keeping me mentally like driven and keeping me fulfilled um i think it's really nice because i'm acting as health consultant the short film's called check engine um and uh, it's really nice to kind of actually be able to bring my professional experience into film, which I didn't really think would happen, at least for a little while. <laughs> so it's been nice to kind of meld the two worlds because I do enjoy healthcare a lot. Um, and to be able to bring that to the other facet of my life that I love doing has been very fulfilling for me. There you go. Mm -hmm. so you're kind of living the dream somehow yeah it's been really good it's uh it's called check engine um check it out it's got an instagram page i'll do a little plug <laughs> i'll take it. um <laughs> it's uh it's gonna be a short about uh, men's mental health and stigmas and stuff that's around that it's gonna be a very powerful and motivating film and i really can't wait to start shooting yeah absolutely that sounds yeah, and, and you know that is one of the things that I do. Yeah, that I do love about the about stories, the fact that 
they can raise awareness about something you know they can they can tell us the side about a story that we might need to hear somehow and i think mm -hmm. that is that is like the way we should be having these conversations you know the other day i was having this interview in which we were, we were talking about like how divided as a society we are right now you know that about the whole you know like everyone has like their own point of view and nobody is able and nobody kind of wants to open up the conversation and, and i do think that with stories it's when you can have those conversations or, or, or like at least um, starting them. Right. Which is. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think men's mental health in particular is a, is a really important topic today. And like, not only because it's June and it's men's mental health month, but also because um, I think there's a, a really huge gap in either research or just like the ability to obtain research on uh, men's mental health statistics because at the end of the day like men are still not feeling comfortable to express like feelings of depression and anxiety and all that um and i think it's important that we just that we make it to a little bit more that we create a little bit more equity in that kind of facet of healthcare because i mean healthcare is important for all mental health care is extremely important for all um and yeah i think uh that creating kind of spreading the awareness through this film is going to be super helpful in uh, spreading the awareness for, Hey, it's okay to reach out, even though you're a man, even though you have to provide and you have to be strong or whatever, you're allowed to be weak or mm. not really weak, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like having a, like being vulnerable. Sense. Yeah. There you go. There you, yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah. you can also, you can be all those things all at the same time and it doesn't make you any less of a man. There you go. Yeah. And and it's and it's interesting you mentioned that because the way I was raised is exactly like that. You know, you can't, you know, you you, you can't um you can't cry, right? Like men don't cry or or you can't feel sad, you know, you so you you like supposed to be all the time strong, you know, you like all like all of those things. And I mean, thank God I I was born in this kind of era that little by little they'd be starting to reach that, you know, like to talk like to talk about those topics now. And um, yeah, which I mean, which, which I do think that I mean, we still have a long, a long way to have those conversations, but at least we're starting out, which is good. So, yeah, and we're having the conversation, and we're doing the film, and the film uh, touches on some very sensitive topics. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. Um, it's gonna be very powerful, and I'm super excited to start filming, and super excited to see how it turns out. There you go. Sounds like we're gonna have another chat anytime soon. <laughs> I love it. And like, what role do you believe storytelling plays in society? And how do you uh, see the actor's role in shaping narratives? I think it plays like a huge role in society. All of we, like everything that we grow up thinking about and like believing in our lives is kind of based on film. Um, so like, I mean, any dreams and aspirations that people want in their lives sometimes are based on movies that they grew up watching or tv shows that their dad showed them or whatever um like you see people in healthcare who wanted to be doctors because they watched like scrubs or like gray's anatomy or whatever um, even though gray's anatomy is wildly inaccurate <laughs> um, <laughs> um but i think it like it plays a very dramatic role in our lives um the films that you grow up watching and like the tv shows that you grow up seeing um and like the representation that's within those films they they not only like they help shape who you are and who you become and who you want to be and who you think about what you think about when you what you want to do when you grow up is can be shaped in part by film mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think a, an actor's role within that is to kind of create a narrative that is relatable to your average joe um because that's who that's who's watching right and that's who's feeling inspired by the film and you so the actor is going to want to feel relatable and likable in that in that situation because somebody else could actually be going to the situation that they're portraying and be like oh my god that's me and look at that look at all i can do yeah you know my best friend he <laughs> When we finished high school, he wanted to, he wanted medicine, you know, because he was a huge house fan, Dr. House. He was a huge fan of, of, of so he went study medicine thinking that that was the way. And no, 
<laughs> I think he, I think he was only there like two semesters, and then he was like, "No, this is not for me. I'm out." <laughs> Doctor, yeah, Harris is a different one. That's a that's an extraordinary circumstance in medicine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was kind of thinking that that was gonna be the way, and I was like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And I was like, "Really? Are you sure?" Yeah. And then yeah, two semesters later, and, and then he was like, "I just this is this is too much," and I was like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, like it's a lot. So you know, it's interesting because yeah, like a lot of people will pursue a career, you know, any type of career due to something they 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 saw on TV. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, love it. And <clears throat> if you could collaborate with any actor, director, writer, living or deceased on a project, who would it be and why? This is a great question, and I've given this a lot of thought. Um... Let me see. I was thinking, uh, just I guess uh, just because of the way that the, the society is today, um, I thought a lot about when when I first saw this question when you showed it to me. Um, I thought a lot about the way that society is today and like how how film can change things. Um, and my brain just automatically went to last summer with Barbie. Um, <laughs> and uh, and Margot Robbie and then I thought about like Margot Robbie's range and how she's uh she's portraying she's portrayed Barbie she's portrayed like Harley Quinn and I think like that kind of that kind of range and that kind of like buy like you you want to buy into her characters too the way that she plays them and so I think she is really really quite inspirational and the fact that she also kind of was on the production side of Barbie as well um played a huge role in that movie and I mean that movie's got a lot deeper meaning than just being Barbie <laughs> but uh yeah I think she's super inspiring especially what she's done with Barbie here and the message that that movie kind of sent especially for like younger girls um I think it'd be super cool to uh collaborate with Margot Robbie. Who knows? <laughs> you know, maybe you are one project away from making that happen. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, we'll see. Now, if you could describe your whole career, but this time on a drink, how would you describe it and how and what would yeah, like how the drink would be called? Describe my career in a drink? Mm hmm Oh, let me see. It has to be like something new, something kind of foreign, something kind of. Oh God, I don't know. I can't even think of a drink right now. I'm a, I'm a wine drinker myself, so I <laughs> don't drink a whole lot of cocktails. Um, hmm. That is a great question. Some sort of like tropical. Some sort of tropic, tropical drink. Tropical drink, okay. And what would it be called? Let's say I, I go to a bar and I want to have that drink. What's the name of that one? Oh, dear. <laughs> the name. I don't know, the deep end, maybe? The deep end? Yeah. Like diving into the deep end? I'll take it. Sounds strong. Sounds... Sounds sounds something that if I take more than two, I'll be thinking about it. I'll be having a conversation with myself, like, should we go for the third one or should we stop for a while? I like it. I'll take it. I'll take it. And like, what motivates you? You know, we all have those days that basically we just want to quit. It's inevitable. Happens to all of us. So how you stay positive on a moment that perhaps in your personal life, eh, it might be a little bit like a little bit challenging let's say uh, well i've got some great supports that are kind of constantly around and that i can always reach out to um so that's that's a tremendously helpful um but like personally i would say i try to focus more on the positives more on the growth like if i look at myself um when i started last year and I look at where I came from last year, like I was I was going through a really rough time in my life before I started getting into acting and then acting kind of 
brought me out of that shell. Um, so if I think of the personal growth that I've had in just a year since I've started really kind of pursuing this, um, that's quite motivating for me. Dig it. Okay. And my last question. So we can all enjoy and relax after a couple of difficult, amazing uh, questions, but also an epic, badass conversation. So here it is. What do you think that could be the best title for this episode? I'm really bad with titles. I don't, I don't know. Give me some context. I don't know. How do you title these things? Well, usually when I ask that question, you know, it's they like... They have a, a title? <laughs> most, I mean, most of the times, but, you know, sometimes it would take like a little bit longer or things like that. So, you know, let's recap a little bit. So we talk about, you know, like pursuing okay. your dreams here. We talk about like the like the challenges that that uh, that 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 you have o overcome, you know, to to where you are right now. Um, that you work as a nurse. So by adding that all together, we could, you know, and mixing it up, we could create something like, uh, you know, something simple that just come that just comes to that just came to my head would be nursing and acting. But we didn't spoke to too much about you know the whole nursing thing, so probably. Mm. the nurse actor I don't know <laughs> mm. or mm. you know this question usually takes time so it's fine <laughs> um, I don't know perhaps like acting and mm. What could be the title to it? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mixing drama and healthcare. Ooh. I like it. Mixing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mixing yeah. drama and healthcare. It sounds fun. It sounds interesting. It sounds catchy. It sounds like, like. Like when you like what when you see the title, be like, "What the hell is that?" You know. That about? <laughs> yeah, mixing drama. Hmm. Mixing drama and healthcare. We have a title. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> There you go. And I mean, at the end, what can I say? You know, the fact that you are pursuing what makes you happy. I mean, it's incredible. It's awesome. Um. And and yeah, it, I mean, like the fact that you're doing it. You know, we all know that that it takes time. That it's uh, that it's sometimes. Yeah, that sometimes is uh, a little bit annoying to pursue what makes you happy when you're doing it. You know, you are showing results, you are showing up. I think that is like the most encouraging encouraging part here, the fact that you're making it happen. You know, you are showing everyone um, uh, who who is who wants to either start something new or who is like a little bit afraid to that it is possible. But of course, you know, there is a lot, there is like a lot of hard work that, that you need to put on but you're making it happen. And I'm super sure that our next conversation would be about the multiple thousand projects you've been here, here and there, because it's more than obvious. I mean, I do think that great things happen to people who are honest by heart, you know, who are honest in what they do. And for sure, you're one of those people. And that is, that is awesome. Thank you very much. Totally. Now we discover why you're super badass. <laughs> Simple. I love it. Um, I do want to thank also those who stayed. Yeah, those who stayed in the whole episode. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as I said in the beginning, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow. Helps a lot. But also, on the description below, you're going to find all of Kaylee's social media. And because we discover why she's super badass, let's make her viral. Hashtag Team Kaylee, right? And um, and again, thank you for making this happen. Keep, keep rocking out there. Keep shining. Keep being super badass. And I'll see you in the next one.